welcome to our presentation on the comparative female anatomy. And in this presentation, we are going to focus on the comparative anatomy of the ovary. This presentation is adapted from the lecture of Dr. John Parrish on his uh, history of reproductive physiology lecture. We also have the anatomy of the female reproductive organs in domestic animals by Professor Porohit. And the comparative female reproductive trap anatomy of domestic animals by Professor Amit Sharma. This presentation shall aim to determine some important species differences in the female reproductive trap of domestic animals. So in this case, we are going to compare you know, the physiology as well as the anatomy of the ovary in domestic animals. Before we are going to discuss uh, the species differences you now in the ovary, let's, let us first have an introduction to some uh, important terms that we are going to encounter when we are studying the animal reproduction. So these are the some terminologies, the important terminologies under the animal reproduction. So of course we have the theriogenology. Uh, so when we say theriogenology, that is the study of the ge genesis of animals. We also have the veterinary gynecology. So this uh, refers to the Physiopathology, or the study of the physiopathology of the female reproduction related to animals. We also have the uh, veterinary obstetrics. It is the study of the normal physiology and disease condition during late pregnancy, around parturition and shortly after parturition, and care and management of them and young one. We also have the veterinary andrology. It is a study of the physiopathology of the male reproduction, including artificial insemination. So all of this are under the field of theriogenology. The overview of the female reproductive tract. So the female reproductive tract consists of two major parts. We have the generative organs and the tubular genitalia, or the tubular part. For the generative organs, it refers to the ovaries. So basically, you know, the ovary is referred to as the female reproductive organ. The, for the tubular genitalia, this includes the oviduct, the uterine horns, the cervix, the vagina, and the external genitalia. So in terms of the embryonic origin, you know, so the, the male and the female reproductive systems develop initially embryonically as indifferent. So it is the SRY gene that is responsible for the differentiation of the uh, embryo you know, into male and female. So we have here the paired mesonephric or the Wolfian ducts and the paramesonephric ducts or the Mullerian ducts. This contribute to the majority of the male and the female internal genital, genital tract respectively. So for the mesonephric duct, uh, it later becomes the male uh, reproductive tract and the paramesonephric or the Mullerian duct, it later becomes the female reproductive tract. So the ovaries, the oviducts, the uterus, the cervix, and the cranial portion of the vagina arise from the primitive Mullerian or the paramesonephric duct, while the vulva, vestibule, and the caudal portion of the vagina develop from the urogenital sinus. The female reproductive tracts of various farm animals are similar to the cow but differ primarily in the shape of the different structures like the uterus, the cervix, the ovaries, and others. So it is the aim of this presentation to uh, differentiate you know, the different structures of the reproductive tract of the female domestic animals such as the different structures of the uterus, the cervix, and the ovaries. This is a lateral and dorsal view of a cow now showing its reproductive tract. And for the dorsal view, we have here the parts of the reproductive tract, now starting with the ovary, the oviduct, the horn of the uterus, the body of the uterus, the cervix, and the vagina. We also have here the lateral view showing the different parts of the reproductive tract. We have here the ovary, the oviduct, and the tubular organs. Uh, we also have here on the dorsal part is the rectum and the we also have here the urinary bladder. 
This diagram shows the schematic diagram of the reproductive tract of a cow showing this schematic diagram and the actual uh, specimen. So for the parts of the reproductive tract, we have the ovary, the oviduct, the uterine horn, the uterine body, the cervix, or sometimes called as the, referred to as the uterine cervix, the vagina, and the vestibule. You also have associated structures such as the uretra, clitoris, and the uh, you also have here the bladder. The ovaries are the generative organs. Uh, it is considered to be the primary reproductive organs of the female. Uh, in terms of its shape, it is almond shaped in most species, such as the cow. It is bean shaped in the horse and mulberry shaped in the sow. It has both exocrine and endocrine function. Exocrine function is the production of the meats. And the endocrine function is the production of estrogen and progesterone. It has two surfaces. We have the medial and the lateral, lateral. It has two borders, the attached border and the free border, and two poles, the uterine and the tubal. The ovary consists of the cortex on its outer part and the medulla on its inner layer. And in terms of its attachment, it is attached by the broad ligament and the proper ligament. This is a diagram of the uh, ovaries, ovary of a cow showing its free border and the attached border and the two poles. These are the, uh, the shape of the different uh, ovaries from different domestic animals. So for ruminants, cow, buffalo, ewe, and doe, it is almond shape or it is oval. For mare, no, it is bean shape or kidney shape. For sow, bitch, and queen, it is it resembles a cluster of grapes or mulberry shape. Again, for its functions, it has a function for gametogenesis, that is the production of the ova, and it also secretes hormones. So aside from estrogen and progesterone, it also secretes the hormone relaxin and oxytocin. So in terms of the structures that can be found in the ovary, so of course in the cortex primarily we have the follicles, now the primary, the secondary, and the graphene or the mature follicle. The graphene follicle is fluid filled cavity which get ruptured at the ovulation to release the ova. So of course now the fluid filled cavity is known as the antrum. At the site of ovulation, development of corpus luteum occur. So when the follicle ruptures, when a mature follicle ruptures, of course, it will become a corpus a hemorrhagicum first, now then it will become a corpus luteum and a corpus albicans. So in the mirror, the ovulation will take place at only one side, and that is the ovulation fossa. In terms of the ovarian migration during development, so for the dog and the cat, the ovaries do not migrate in development, so it remains in the dorsal part of the abdomen caudal to the kidneys at the tip of the uterine horns. In other domestic species, the ovaries migrate during development, so the greatest degree of migration occurs in ruminants. The ovaries in these species come to lie close to the ventral abdominal wall, cranial to the pelvic inlet. For the pig, they descend to the middle of the abdomen during development. So the ovaries consist of stroma or network of connective tissue and blood vessels. So the vessels and the nerves will enter the ovary through the hilus. So in terms of the layers, now again we have the uh, two layers or two regions of the ovary. We have the medulla and the cortex. The cortex is usually on the outer side, medulla is on the inner side. For the mare, mature mare, this is reversed. The medulla is on the outside and the cortex is on the inside. In terms of the location, the bovine ovaries are located in the cranial border of the broad ligament. And they lie on both sides of the uterine horn parallel to the cervix over the pelvic floor. Now, the right ovary is slightly larger than the left since the right is physiologically more active. The location of the ovaries becomes abdominal during pregnancy. We also have the structure known as the ovarian bursa, which is the pocket formed 
by the uterioovarian ligament and the mesovarium. Again, the mesovarium no, is the broad ligament that, that surrounds the or that supports the ovary. The diagram shows the location no, as well as the structure of the ovaries of the cow. So in here, we have here the presence of the follicles that are uh, present in the cortex or in the surface of the uh, bovine ovary. For the mare, the ovaries are located in the sublumbar area, ventral to the fourth or fifth lumbar vertebra. In terms of the shape, again, the shape of the kidney, or rather the shape of the ovary, is kidney shape or bean shape. And it also has a smooth surface. The follicles can be identified by transrectal palpation, but the CL cannot. So identification of the corpora lutea requires ultrasonography. The sow. The ovaries are located behind the kidneys near the lateral margins of the pelvic inlet. So we have here the ovaries of a sow resembling a mulberry shape or a cluster of grapes. In the bitch, the ovaries are located 1 to 3 cm behind the caudal pole of the kidneys opposite the third lumbar vertebra. Uh, the ovaries are concealed in the ovarian bursa and the ovaries are elongated and flat. So these are the uh, ligaments that support the ovary. We have the uh, suspensory ligament and we also have the uh, proper ligament of the ovary. So this diagram shows the location of the ovaries of a dog. So for both dogs and cats, now the ovaries are located caudal to the kidneys. Now as shown in the figure. So this is the ovary and we also have here the opening now, of the or the slit of the ovarian bursa and this is a kidney and of course you have the ligaments now that, that attach the, the ovary. Now of course uh, we have the mesovarium. We also have the proper ligament now, of the ovary now, in this figure. This is another diagram of the location of the ovaries of a dog showing here as shown here and of course it is associated with the lumbar vertebrae on the back region. This diagram shows the ovarian differences between a cow, sow, and mare. So in all domestic species except the horse, the ovaries are ellipsoidal in shape. For the cow, it is said to be almond or oval in shape. For the sow, it is mulberry shaped or it resembles a cluster of grapes. And for the mare, it is kidney shaped or bean shaped. In terms of the surface, the cow has the presence of the corpora lutea. For the sow, in this diagram, there's the presence of numerous large follicles, and for the mare, it is smooth. For the cow, sow, you in humans, and for most domestic animals, the cortex is located on the outside, and the medulla is located on the inside. The cortex has the presence of the, of course, it is where uh, the CL and the follicles develop. For the ovulation, it can occur or it can take place at any point of the ovary. This is a comparison between the layers that can be found in a cow in the mare. For the ovarian cortex, of course, the ovarian cortex of the cow is located on the outside, and on the inside we have the presence of the, of course, the medulla is on the inside. For the mare, it is reversed, so the medulla is located on the outside, and if the cortex is located on the inside. So as you can see here, the corpora lutea and the follicles develop within the ovary of the mare. And on the outside, we have here the blood vessels that are present in the medulla of the mare's ovary. For the cow, as you can see here, we have here the follicles in various stages of development. We have the primary, uh, the, also the secondary and the tertiary follicles. And we also have here an ovulated follicle or the ruptured follicle that will later on develop into corpus hemorrhagicum, corpus luteum, and the corpus uh, albicans. This is the ovary of the mare you know, showing the, uh, we have the follicles in the corpus luteum. So again, they are located, and these are located on the medulla 
or rather in the cortex that is located within you know, the ovary. And of course, the CL is responsible for the production of progesterone and the follicles are responsible for the production of estrogen and uh, also the development of the oocyte. So this uh, portion here is incised in order to reveal the follicles, this with the follicles and the CL. A unique structure that is found in the equine ovary is the ovulation fossa. It is the only site where ovulation takes place in this uh, animal species. The diagram shows a comparison between the ovary of a mare you know, on the left and versus you know, a typical ovary on the right. So the diagram shows the um, ovary of a mare you know, showing the reverse pattern wherein the cortex is located on the inside and the medulla on the outside. As compared to a typical uh, ovary wherein the cortex is located on the outside and where the different stages of the follicle develop and the corpus luteum also develops. And so note that there is only one region where ovulation takes place in the mare and this is known as the ovulation fossa versus the more typical scenario where the oocytes ovulate from anywhere on the surface of the ovary. So for example, in this uh, particular diagram, so ovulation can take place in this part here, this part here, and uh, this, this portion here will later on ovulate also as this particular follicle will mature. As of course opposed to this one here, wherein the, the cortex is located on the inside. So these are the follicles. You know, and this is a mature follicle. So this mature follicle will later on ovulate. And ovulation will only take place at one site. And that is known as the ovulation fossa. So again, the surface of the mare's ovary is smooth. Because again, no, yung, the structures here are located on the inside. Uh, this table shows the ovarian dimensions in domestic animal species. So these are the, for example, the length, the width, thickness, and the weight of the ovaries of the cow, mare, ewe, goat, and so on. So for example, no, in this uh, table, you can see that in terms of the weight, the Ovaries of the mare are considered to be the heaviest and in terms of the dimension, in the terms of the length, it is also has not the greatest uh, dimension. In terms of the uh, weight, also in terms of the follicle, um, also you know, the mare has uh, the largest and we also have here the uh, corpora lutea. So, in terms of the corpora lutea, uh, pinakamalaki yung sa, uh, for example, here on the cow. And these are the shape of the different, uh, the ovaries of the different domestic animal species. So, again, for the cow, for the ewe goat, for the bitch, buffalo, and the camel, it is oval or be, uh, oval or almond shape or ellipsoidal for the mirror it is bean shaped for the sow it is mulberry or it resembles a cluster of grapes for our assessment on this topic so why does a mare have only one baby and a pig has many the reason for this is the mirror you know, generally ovulates one follicle or at most two follicles at a time while a pig may ovulate up to 24 uh, follicles. So that is why uh, the, the mare will only give birth no, usually to a one, no, one foal, while for, for a sow, it can, it can give birth to as much as 24 piglets per farrowing.